All right, in this video, we're going to look at how can we calculate area of lipid droplets. All right, so if your hypothesis or the parameter that you're wanting to measure is you want to compare the negative control or the positive control to your experimental and you're wanting to look at just the area, which is kind of a quasi measurement of volume of these lipid droplets, this is how you would go about doing it in image J. So the first thing you want to do is you want to figure out, well, which cells do we need to go after? And sometimes finding the cell is really easy. Like, it's really obvious that there's a cell here because it's missing the nuclei, right? So there's a cell, there's a cell. But sometimes it's not always that easy. And so what I would recommend you doing is let's go and open up a, the corresponding um, image that goes along with it. So here's the corresponding image that goes with this particular setting of stearic acid. This is stearic acid merge, and the other one was stearic acid lipid droplet only. And we're going to use the lipid droplet only to do what we need to do. But what I like doing here is creating a saved file, so you can use the file right that you manipulated. And what I would recommend doing is to use this tool here called a multi-point tool and you can double click on it right now to configure it and you can change how it appears and things like that um, I, I mean I like it just the way it is so I'm not going to change anything but then you go about and you're like okay which cells am I going to go after and so I kind of like having this putting it side by side with your other your lipid droplet only because then you can say okay I'm going after this cell and you know what you know what you're going after so you don't like count two things twice and it keeps a permanent record of what you've done and so here we'd label this cell, we're going to do this cell, we're going to do this cell, and notice how it's numbered at 1, 2. And then maybe we'll do, I don't know, you know this cell 3, maybe this cell 4, and 5. And typically per condition, I would not do more than that. Okay, so, and, and what we're going to be looking for is distinct lipid droplets. And I'll get at to that. I would not pick a cell that's on the edge of a screen because those, you know, you don't have the full cell. It's the kind of hard to see sometimes. So you want to pick cells. You want to be sort of unbiased, but you also want to pick cells that kind of make sense uh, within the frame. And then what you can do with this, which is really neat, you can then save this image, right? And you can save this image and what you want is ensure, and I accidentally clicked on something there, but you want to ensure that these these markers are conveyed right are, are are actually able to be seen in the next set of in, in your saved data uh, and if it doesn't you can always do like a screenshot or something to kind of save this information so you know exactly which cells you're going after so now that I know I'm going to count this cell first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my lipid droplet sample here I'm going to count this cell first so what you want to do is you want to zoom in on this cell so to do that, there's a couple different ways you can do that uh, depending on your computer. But on my computer, I can do Control Plus, right? And it's going to go wherever my cursor is, right? You can also click on it, right click. Um, well, well, here we go. You can um, get to set it up here. But more or less is you can use this little cursor here. You can right click and left click. You know, reverses it. And so those are different options there. So there's lots of different options here. Um, you know as to what how you can zoom in and zoom out but you want to zoom in enough that you're going to be able to see the individual lipid droplets and then you know sometimes you can zoom in too far you know but then you can zoom out you know, and, and get to where you think you can manipulate these images effectively so now what we want to do is we have a couple different options here about how to measure area so remember we're trying to measure area in this particular video, video lecture I'm going to show you how to do just counts in another video lecture uh, so a couple different tools uh, we can do, probably the most common is most of these are going to be, in this particular example, are spherical. But some of your groups, you're going to have some really weird shaped lipid droplets. Uh, but in the case, if you can find distinct puncti, that's the ones we're going to go after. Notice I would not try and measure this. Why? This is not a lipid droplet. This is a bunch of lipid droplets in one. And so especially if you're trying to get area, this is not going to be representative of a lipid droplet, right? So these are the lipid droplets individual. And so you can be somewhat particular about which lipid droplets in a cell that you're going after. Uh, and that would be beneficial. Now, which one can you use? Obviously, if they're perfect circles, you can use this circle tool here. And you can highlight it, okay? So that would highlight that circle the best you can. 
Uh, I'm doing a little bit fast because I'm doing it here for you live. So as I'm doing this live, now what we want to do here is we want to calculate that area. So how do you do that is you come up to the toolbar, you come to analyze, and you click measure. Notice there is also a shortcut here on my computer called Control M. So you can use your keyboard to do this rapidly, which is kind of nice. But for now, I'm just going to click on it, and you can show you that it calculated the area for this. Now, I've already preset this so it only is showing me area. But you can actually do this to show more things. So what we want to do is you can actually come here to set measurements. And notice how I only have it set to area. And that's what we want when we're looking at area. But there's also other things that you can ask this to calculate. And depending upon you know your experiment, you want to do a bunch of different things here. But for today, we are only interested in area. So that will be just fine. So notice it's that spot, it's calculated area, okay? And then you can go around to the next spot, and I can do Control M, right? And I can just keep doing this, all right? So I'm gonna do a few here. So after we have, you know, done quite a few, and I would do as many as there are distinct lipid droplets in this region. Once again, this would not be a distinct lipid droplet. This is not, this is not. But you can see these distinct lipid droplets. This is what you want to focus on when you're doing area of lipid droplets. And we were going to do more than this, but for purposes of the day, I just did you know, seven points here. And so you can do several things here. You can take this information and copy it, right? And so we can copy this information right into an Excel file. And you would want to set up your Excel file, you know, whatever this is. This is lipid droplet, steric lipid droplet. This is cell number one and then you would have all the information for cell number one, and then you would do the same thing for cell number two, cell number three, and cell number four, cell number five. And I, like I said, I don't know if you need to go beyond that. At some point, you get so many data points, you're gonna have more information than you need anyways. Um, so don't overwork yourself here. Um, you know, uh, once again, distinct data points, several cells, like you know, three, four, five cells max uh, per condition, uh, and probably won't even need that much. Uh, so you can do that. Another thing you can do, you can also save as, and it's going to save it as an Excel file usually or some type of version of Excel file that can be a text file that can be opened in Excel. Depending on how much data you have. I mean, both work just fine. Uh, and like I said, so then you're going to have this data that you're going to gather. And then within Excel, we'll manipulate in Excel. And I'll show you how to do that in a future tutorial video. One last thing on this. It, some of you may find it helpful. You see that we were using the oval tool here. But maybe you have a rectangle or a square type of lipid droplet. Very unlikely. But more likely you're going to have something that's misshapen. I find this freehand tool here to be the most beneficial because it allows you to kind of shape it the way it actually is. And so you might find that helpful for some of these. Not in this particular example because most of them are very nice and round. But some lipid droplets do induce strange shapes to their, to their lipid droplets. Some of these fatty acids do. Um, so just keep that in mind that that tool does exist for that reason. And it will work just as well for this measurement tool for measuring area.